Every day we are faced with the consequences of the choices we make. So what are you building your life on and what is your foundation? Welcome to Pastor's Point, I'm Jamie Schmitz. Today's program addresses this important subject as Pastor Ben Michelek from Grace Bible Fellowship Church of Swanton, Ohio, shares his message entitled, To Do or Not To Do, What Is Your Foundation? Welcome, thank you for joining me on Pastor's Point. To begin, I'd like to read from Matthew chapter seven, if you have your Bibles and would like to join me. Matthew seven, starting in verse 24. It says, everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell. And great was the fall of it. I'd like to talk for just a little bit on foundations. What is your life built upon? We're all familiar with the leaning tower of Pisa all the way over in Italy. And I am not a architect or engineer or builder, I'm a pastor. But just by looking at the Leaning Tower of Pisa, I can tell that there's a problem with the foundation. With the, the reading that I did about it, the Leaning Tower of Pisa was built almost a thousand years ago. And as it was being built, the lean began and it continued to lean throughout its construction. In about the 20th or 21st century, they did some correcting actually to the lean. Um, but the problem does not lie with the construction itself, but actually down below in the foundation. The Leaning Tower of Pisa actually continues to lean because they could actually fix it. They, they know what the problem is and they have the technology to fix it, but now it's a tourist attraction. Everyone comes to see the tower with the, with the poor foundation. Earthquakes are a problem out on some of the uh, west coast um, there have recently been um, heavy earthquakes in Chile. Um, back in 2010, over 700 people were killed. Earthquakes are, are a real problem for buildings because they shake the very foundation and the walls will even crumble. Out in California, the past 30 years, engineers have developed ways to construct sky skyscrapers that actually float, not on air, um, but they have a system of ball bearings and springs and, and cylinders where the building itself is not attached to the ground, but it can actually move or it stays still as the, the ground, the foundation moves underneath it. Each of these foundations are specifically designed so that we don't have more leaning tower of Pisa's or even worse, towers that collapse and kill people. Foundations are vital, not just to buildings, but to your own life. So I would ask you, what is your life built upon? Some people build their lives on their money, their jobs, their family, their friends. And then these things begin to crumble when the storms of life come. Here in Matthew 7, Jesus really gives two options for foundations. A firm, solid foundation and everything else, which will crumble when the storm comes. You must make sure, you must make sure that your life is founded upon the hearing and the doing of the Word of God. Three ideas here I would um, suggest to you from Matthew chapter 7, that you have a choice of action. You have a choice of foundation, but no choice in the judgment. A choice of action, we see that in verse 24 and 26, um, the two choices in verse 24, we have the individual, the wise man who chooses to build his house on the rock. And then we have the foolish man who decides to build his house on the sand. So the first option is to hear and do. To hear and do. The wise man is the one who does this. And he does it intentionally. It's not an accident. It's like building a house. You don't accidentally go and build a house. A lot of planning goes into that structure. I wonder if you intentionally make decisions in your life based upon the Word of God 
or if you're just floating through life and let decisions make themselves. The wise do things intentionally, but the wise also do things thoroughly. In Luke chapter 6, we find a parallel account of this story that Jesus tells. But there's another detail that Luke gives. In Luke chapter 6, um, it talks about how everyone who, um, this is verse 47, everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you what he is like. He is like a wise man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock that Luke gives this detail where the wise man intentionally and thoroughly is preparing the foundation of the house before he actually builds the structure. This wise person is in great contrast. This wise person hearing and doing is in great contrast to the fool who hears, but he does not do. He disregards. Why does a fool do this? Why, why would someone hear the truth and understand it, and yet disregard it. It's because a fool is self-focused. In the Old Testament, this, fool, this word fool is very common, and it's always used of an unbeliever, because a fool is, se is someone who rejects God and rejects wisdom. Pro Psalm 14, verse 1 says, The fool says in his heart, there is no God. Proverbs 1, 7 says, The fools despise wisdom and instruction. You turn, um, we don't have the time to read it together, but 2 Chronicles chapter 10. You go and, and read it sometime about a man by the name of Rehoboam. Rehoboam was the son of King Solomon. The Bible says King Solomon was the wisest man who ever lived. That wisdom was not passed to his son Rehoboam. If you'll read about Rehoboam, you see what outrageous folly he showed after he, he became the king. King Solomon passed away, Rehoboam becomes the king, and he rejects the wisdom suggested to him by all of the counselors that had counseled King Solomon. Instead, this fool, Rehoboam, listened to his peers, and then the kingdom of Israel was split into the northern kingdom of Israel, the southern kingdom of Judah. Why would he do that? Because he was self-focused. He was a fool. He rejected God. He rejected the wisdom that was offered to him. You and I must not be like the fool, to hear and then disregard. A fool is an unbeliever. He's self-focused, but also he is convenience motivated. That's from our text here in Matthew 7. This foolish man who builds his house on the sand. Why would you build your house on the sand? Because it's easy to dig in sand. You lay a foundation in sand, you can do it really quick. To dig into the rock would be very difficult. A fool prefers speed over preparation. Proverbs 14, 6. One who is wise is cautious and turns away from evil, but a fool is reckless and careless. Fools are self-centered and they're convenience motivated because they prefer speed over preparation. Every year here in America, we must prepare our taxes and you would be a fool to hastily throw everything together, shove it in an envelope, send it off. You need to take your time, make sure that you do everything right. Otherwise, the IRS is going to come knocking. Fools prefer speed over preparation, but fools also prefer ease over thoroughness. Um, for a while, I was a high school soccer coach um, of, a, of a small private school, not, not, a, not serious athletes. I had a lot of lazy athletes. We, we didn't make cuts on the team, so basically anyone could join. And as we were practicing, we were running laps around the soccer field, I would often see individuals cutting corners. And as a coach, I'd have to get on them and say, that's really not going to help you when it come, becomes game time. It's a foolish thing to do when you're preparing for that game to cut corners when you're practicing, when you're preparing, when you're lifting weights, when you're skipping, you know, instead of eating healthily, you're you know, eating extra ice cream. Fools prefer ease over thoroughness. What about you in your life? Are you preferring to do what's easy? Are you preferring to do what's quick instead of being thorough and preparing? Are you being like the fool or the wise man? You're hearing the word of God. You're hearing the words of Christ. What are you going to do with them? Are you going to listen and obey? Or are you going to hear and disregard? Do you cut spiritual corners? 
Obviously, I'm a pastor. Every week, um, people come to my church. And every week I look out at my congregation and I think, where is he today? You know, where is she today? Th this seat is empty. People that I love and I pray for. And yet they decide to skip multiple weeks in a row. And I think, I wonder if they're cutting spiritual corners because it wasn't easy this morning to come to church. That they're not concerned about the thoroughness or the preparation that the, the foundation that they're laying in their lives. You have a choice of action here, whether to do or disregard, but you also have a choice of foundation. And we see that again here in verse 24 and 26, where the wise man is like the one who builds his house on the rock. And the foolish man is the one who builds his house on the sand. This really is not a question of building. It's a question of foundations, the underlayment, the part that you cannot see. So as I look at my congregation and the people who are not there, it would not be for me to judge them and to look into their hearts because I cannot see the foundation. I can see what they're doing, the way that they're living, but the foundation cannot be seen because it's underneath. One foundation, one option that you have is the rock of verse 24. And Jesus said, this is like the, the rock is the person who hears the words of mine and does them. A hearer and a doer. And again, you cannot see this just in people. You remember the name Judas Iscariot, and it, it carries such a stigma because he betrayed our Lord. But Judas was one who heard the word over and over. He even taught the word. Um, if you were to look at Matthew chapter 10, when Jesus takes the 12 disciples and sends them out, and they go out teaching and doing miracles. But Judas was not one who had laid the foundation. He was a fool. Are you building your life on the rock by hearing and obeying? Or are you going to be a fool who only hears and then disregards? One foundation is the rock. The other foundation is the sand. This sand is anything other than obedience. Anything else that you choose, you might hear, to, you might hear and agree. You might hear and teach. You might even be someone who hears and preaches. But unless you hear and obey... Jesus says you are a fool. Remember our leaning tower of Pisa. The problem was not with the materials that they were using. The problem wasn't necessarily in the architecture or the design per se. It was in the foundation, the weak soil that was the problem. Have you been spending your life hearing the word of God and yet not building your life on it by obeying it? So many people in this life, build their lives on the things that they can touch. You know, they spend their lives investing in their houses, in their cars, in their jobs, even in family and friends. But they don't take the time to make sure that they are founded upon the rock, listening and obeying the word. Your choice of action reveals your choice of, judge, your choice of foundation. But finally, you have no choice in the judgment. In verse 25 and 27, this is when the storm comes. It says, the rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew against the house, but it did not fall because it had been founded upon the rock. Verse 27, when the rain came and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house, it fell, but great was its fall because it had been built on the sand. Something I'd like you to notice about this storm that Jesus suggests in this story is that it is a far-reaching storm. There is no one who can hide from it. And while we do go through different struggles in life, different storms of life, loss of a job, death in the family, friends forsaking you, the crash of the stock market, troubles come. And if you're not founded on a good foundation, that might be a storm that wrecks your life. But I fear that this storm that Jesus is talking about is not simply these awful struggles that we go through. This storm tests the very foundations of your life. There is no one who escapes this storm. It is far-reaching. I visited Florida on occasion I have friends who live there. I don't live there myself. But I've heard about the hurricanes that come through. 
years ago, um, we've had, actually we've seen dozens of hurricanes come through with catastrophic events. Whole cities seems like they were leveled or just flooded and the foundation shaken. Some people try to avoid those storms by leaving town, that, that the freeways are packed on the way out. The storm that Jesus talks about here is inescapable. You can't just say, well, I just will go and hide somewhere. I'll go build a bunker somewhere. I'll just go live on a deserted island somewhere. Then I don't have to deal with people or pastors or the Bible. This storm is coming because this far-reaching storm is the final storm. In Matthew 7, 22, just a few verses before our passage today, Jesus talks about the day of the Lord, the day of judgment. That day in Matthew 7, 22 is that final day of judgment because judgment is coming. Whether we would believe it or not, the day when we stand before our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to give an account, how many of us are ready for that judgment day? It's often said that God is a God of second chances. And depending on what you mean by that, I would agree. If you mean that we all mess up and that God is willing to forgive, I wholeheartedly agree. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. No matter what evil or sin or wickedness you have committed, if you will turn from that and turn to the Lord, he will forgive you. The Bible promises our God is a forgiving God, no matter what you have done. But if by second chances you mean that God doesn't care what you do, and at the judgment he'll just let you do it over again, then my friend, I have bad news for you. The judgment is final. This storm that Jesus talks about here in Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27, is the final storm when your foundation of your life will be tested, and if you have decided to forsake the words of Christ, you've heard them and said, you know what, that's not for me. When this judgment comes, your foundation will be destroyed. Your house, everything that you have built your entire life will be destroyed. And it says, great will be that fall. What does this mean for you? It means you need to get it right now. You, you can't wait till the day of judgment. Now is the day of decision. Now is the day of salvation, the Apostle Paul writes. In my house, I have a basement. If you have a basement in your house, that is the foundation. Some are built on concrete slabs. Some have uh, crawl space. How important is the foundation of your house? A number of years ago, my wife and I were looking at buying a new house. And we went and saw this one house. And if you looked at it, you could just see a peak that one, edge of the, one side of the house was sagging and it was on a crawl space. So we went and investigated a little bit. I opened up the crawl space and went and looked inside and actually the foundation, the crawl space was not well done. It was an addition and it had begun to sink. And we closed everything up and left and said, no, thank you. We didn't want to buy a house where the foundation was sinking. I went and did just a, a little bit of internet research to see how much it would cost to fix a foundation. According to a website I found, major foundation repairs involving hydraulic piers can cost about $10,000 to fix a foundation. Or even more. Some minor cracks, just cracks in the foundation, $500. On average, in America, households who, who go to fix their foundations spend about $4,000, and that's just the average. Foundations are vital, and we understand that in the building that we're living in. But what about the house that you're building? What, what about this life that you're building? What is the foundation that you have chosen? Is it your own intuition, the things that you understand, the things that you accept? Or is it the very word of God? You must make the foundation of your life the hearing and the doing of the word of God. In James chapter 1, James uses a very interesting illustration um, he says in James 1, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves that you would hear and then not do, to walk away and think that you're okay. He says someone who does that is like someone who walks up to a mirror 
Every morning you probably get up and look in the mirror. And if you see that your hair is a mess, you have makeup all over your face or you need to brush your teeth. Anyone who walks up and sees that and then turns and goes on with their life is a fool to, to see imperfections that you need to fix. James says, anyone who hears the words and does not do them is like that. You walk up to the mirror. He says that this book is the perfect law of liberty and that anyone who will read it or hear it and not be changed by it. Jesus says here in Matthew chapter 7, they're a fool. So I would encourage you, consider the words of Christ. You say, what, what do I need to do? Pastor Ben, why do you say all these things? Why is this a big deal? How important is this foundation? This foundation is of eternal consequence. Because if you are making the wrong decision in this life, it will affect all of eternity. Again, what's going on here in this passage, just to summarize. Here in Matthew 7, Jesus talks about a choice of action that you have. You are hearing the word now. Are you going to do it or disregard it? Your choice of action. You have a choice of foundation. Are you going to build your life on the hearing and doing of the word of God? Or will you build your life on something else? A choice of action, a choice of foundation, but you have no choice in the judgment because Jesus promises that the day of judgment is coming. And if you're prepared, it is not a sorrowful thing. It's a, a joyful thing, something that we look forward to. We have confidence and the promise that Jesus gives of forgiveness. What are you waiting for today? Will you not turn from your sin and turn to the Savior? He promises to forgive you. Will you pray with me? Father in heaven, we thank you for the love that you have poured out on us, sending Jesus Christ to die for our sin. He didn't die for his own sin. He was a perfect man, lived a perfect life. He is God in the flesh. And he died on the cross to pay the price of sin, the sin of us, the sin of others. And you promise in your word that anyone who will turn from their sin, turn to you, will confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus, that we will be saved. You promise, Acts 16, 31, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Here today, Father, we have read in your word about the foundation that we must build our lives on the foundation of hearing and doing your word. I pray for myself, my own family, that we would be convinced that this is what we need to be building our lives on. I pray for any of those who are watching today, that they would be listening, that they would be changed by the word, that your scriptures would penetrate their hearts, that they would realize that they need to be building on the right foundation, the good ground, the rock of hearing and doing the word. Father, we pray these things for your honor and your glory, that your name would be proclaimed around the earth, not for our own sakes. Pray that your Holy Spirit would be at work convicting and convincing. And we pray these things in Jesus' name, our Savior. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you will go and read the scriptures for yourself. Matthew chapter 7 was our passage for today. And thank you again for joining me on Pastor's Point. Thank you for watching Pastor's Point today. If you would like to learn more about the church featured on today's show, feel welcome to connect with them at the following contact information. If this show has been a blessing to you, visit our feedback section on our website at wlmb.com slash Pastor's Point. You will also be able to request a DVD of today's show and find a schedule of pastors for this season's episodes. We are so grateful for your prayers of financial support that make Pastors Point possible. Be sure to tune in next time when another local pastor shares a message from the Word of God right here on Pastors Point.